Hello, my precious friends. I hope you had a nice Christmas and that you're still enjoying it. That you are with family and friends and feel the peace of God and moved your focus a little bit away from coronavirus and uh, everything that's going on in the world right now that is making you scared or disturbing your life that this Christmas is a resting time for your soul. I was praying earlier today, you know, I know we all been struggling, especially this year on many levels. It's been fights. It's been um, many types of fights and uh, it's been hard on many people. Um, we all can see that darkness is moving uh, closer to the earth. Darkness has plans. Uh, but in the midst of the darkness, we have Jesus and the light will shine brighter than ever in these times. And we will experience the power that is inside of us how great God is inside of us and his words to our lives that we should not have any fear, that the promises of God still stands, that he has the overview, he is almighty, he is the everlasting father, the perfect prince of peace. That's the one that is inside us. And we need to experience those, that presence of God in our lives. And this morning when I was praying, I felt that God said that I will give you double for your trouble. Many people have faced a lot of trouble, not only this year, but many years. And God is the one who sees everything we went through and are going through and he will pay us back because we were faithful we were holding on to the promises even if we were suffering we still held on to his word and i want to read to you guys from joel where it says the lord says in joel uh two Verse 25, I will give you back what you lost to the swarming locust, the hoping locust, the stripping locust, and the cutting locust. And he will give us back. And it's many scriptures in the Bible that tells us about that we will be rewarded, that we will get back for our sufferings. Our sacrifices, our pain, our struggle, our deserts, the time that has been hard on all of us, not only this year, but maybe decades, maybe half your life, maybe a lot of suffering in your childhood with sickness, with uh, financial struggle, relationship struggle, uh, loneliness, isolation, a lot of battles in your life and God has seen it all and he wants you to know that he's going to pay you back for your struggle. In Hosea, I love this scripture, chapter 2, it says in verse 15, then I will give her her vineyards from there and the valley of Acre as a door of hope and she will sing there as in the days of her youth as in the days when she came out from the land of Egypt. You see, every time we come out of something, we are delivered of something, the enemy tries to bind us with new things. He tries to block our path. He tries to disturb our lives, to make us constantly walk in struggle in some way. That there always is some, some kind of pressure over your life. 
And I had a life like that a lot, where I've been forcing myself to get up again and again and again and again. And for some of us that are on the edge, our life is like a battlefield sometimes, where sometimes we get hit of an arrow from hell, bam, you fall down, but you very fast get up again. You get up again, you get up again, and you learn to walk under pressure because you're not walking after the system of this world anymore. You're stripped out of that. You were walking on a higher path and you walking after his word, constantly after his word. Every time I'm facing something, I look for a word. I look for something from the Holy Spirit because I'm living after what he says to me. Yes, I face painful seasons. I do like you, but still I am praying on the inside all the time. Even if I'm suffering, I'm still praying. And I'm searching God for answers. And he always gives me words. Words of comfort. And I know that many, 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 many people all over this planet has been suffering big time this year. But I want to tell you that God has a season ready for you and me where he will pay you back for your struggle and your trouble and your pressure and, and despair and everything you went through. He will give you back people. He will reward you, not only in heaven, but also on this planet. He will give you back. He will raise up a garden around you with beautiful flowers and you will lay in the green pastures and you, your soul will come to rest and he will feed you words from heaven into your situation and he will open doors for you of blessings. And I just want to pray for people today who are struggling financially and I break that poverty spirit over your family over your family tree that you always are ending in debt that you always are struggling with money and it's a burden for you and I break it in the name of Jesus I speak prosperity and favor over your life in the name of Jesus I speak victory over your bank account Victory over your wallet. Victory over your paycheck. I pray that you will get a job that will give you double or on what you had before. That God will bless you financially with a bigger house, with a better car, with more money. So you can live in that blessing financially. Because you deserve it. And he's, he's full of mercy. And you need it. You need it. You don't know how to pay your bills. And God is coming into that situation right now. To fill up your bars. He's going to fill up your bank account. He's going to fill you up with blessings. He's going to give you double for your trouble. And you've been paying your tithes. You've been giving other people blessings you've been making food for people and you give money to people even if you didn't have money yourself and god has seen your heart because the bible says when you give much will be given back to you but if we hold back what we have will always will also be taken away from us and i think god will bless us financially when we are blessing others because he knows what we need so i just speak that word for somebody in here and i also speak a word for healing you who are suffering with diseases you're in or out of hospitals you have medications and 
you have side effects of those medications. So you need other meds, other medication upon your medication. is a vicious circle. And I'm breaking that sickness over your life in the name of Jesus. That you don't have to self-medicate anymore. God will give you heavenly medicine. He will pour his oil and wine into your wounds. Is it even if it's physical wounds, is a physical disease or it's a mental disease? I break it in the name of Jesus over your life. I speak healing over any kind of sickness, any trauma, any side effect of your childhood. I break it in the name of Jesus. I speak healing over cancer. I speak healing over diabetes, over high blood pressure. I pull it down in the name of Jesus and low blood pressure. I pull it up in the name of Jesus. I speak balance over your, your body right now. Balance over your mind, a peaceful mind, because we have a relationship to the Prince of Peace. The Prince of all, the Prince, the High Priest, the Prince of Peace is coming into your situation with peace in your mind where you were disturbed, where you were full of anxiety and you were bound by fear. The enemy is an expert on binding our lives. Even if we got out of something, you get into something new that is binding your life. Because he wants you to constantly be bound and addicted to something. You know, people who, are, who have been addicted to like drugs, for example, and they get out of that, they, they, they got out of all the symptoms and they, they're totally free from drugs. You see, the, the real prob problem is uh, addiction. And sometimes we forget that an addiction is a weakness and it's a symptom of something that can keep going and the enemy can use other doors into your life. Even if you were set free from drugs, he will find other doors to make you addicted, maybe to food, maybe to pornography, maybe to shopping, to spend ridiculously a lot of money to self-medicate with shopping, addiction of games, addiction of eating ice cream, candy, you know, to make your body fall apart. So he finds other doors in the addiction problem. So God wants to go to the root of your problem today. He doesn't only take the symptoms. Sometimes we don't know what the root is because we always pray for the symptoms of our problems. But God, and then you're just going back to the same thing, just in another form. And God wants you to be completely healed. He came to set the captors free. He came to loosen people. He came to heal the brokenhearted. He came to restore our lives. So we need to take that word and use it and maybe let the Holy Spirit go back to our childhood issues to be completely restored there. To take out the root of the problem. Rejection wounds, low self-esteem, insecurity, fear, anxiety, doubt, Jealousy, you know, jealousy. Sometimes we pray for jealousy. We break the spirit of jealousy. But jealousy is rooted in a very deep insecurity of a person's life. Where he or she doesn't feel that they measure up to other people. They think they're not good enough. So they get jealous and they start to compare. They compare their lives with other people and they always find themselves coming up short. But that is a lie from the pit of hell. And all these weaknesses in our soul 
God wants to restore. He wants to restore our lives and he wants us to not look back anymore. Don't look back at this year or other years where you suffered. Just look into the future with Jesus Christ because there is hope. The Bible says that I know the thoughts I have for you is not thoughts of destroying your future, but it's peace. I only have peace for you. I have joy for you. Jesus was filled with the oil of gladness. And that oil of gladness should be your strength, even in if you're facing a lot of hardships right now, you can be on top of that hardship with the oil of gladness. It's supernatural, but that is your strength. My mother, she went through a lot of struggle in her life, but she always had this joy for the Lord. She was singing and rejoicing. She was dancing on the snake's head on purpose. And that became her strength, that she was always happy. She gave people flowers. She blessed people. And sometimes she was crying on the inside, but she decided to honor God and, and, and express the love for the salvation, the love to Jesus Christ in her personal life. And she was singing and rejoicing on top of crazy circumstances sometimes. Because the joy of, our, of the Lord is our strength. And that will push out the depression of your life. I decide to be happy. I decide out of my own free will to rejoice in the Lord. And not let the enemy come in on any way on my life. I can feel he tries to do it. But I always have scriptures to push him back. I'm standing on the word of God that no weapon formed against me shall prosper and no weapon formed against you shall prosper either. So God is going to give you back people. He's going to restore everything because the enemy, when, when Jesus was on hanging on the cross, the enemy got really happy. He's so stupid. He thought that I will, I'm winning this thing. I won over God's son. I won, he thought. But he didn't know that what, what happened on the cross what was his biggest failure of everything that happened in the world history because he was going down that moment. He lost everything. Jesus took the keys to death. He took the keys to everything that is dark on this planet. He was ruling over principalities and every form of darkness and triumphed over them on the cross. For eternity, he did that. So we have received that authority in his name to conquer everything that come against us. And God wants you to know today that he has a season in front of you that is powerful, is blessed, and you're going to get paid back. It's payback time. You're going to get double back for your trouble. He's going to bless you with great relationships. He's going to bless you and use you. He's going to use everything the enemy tried to strike in your life and, and make you feel ashamed and make you feel like a zero, like you are worth nothing, like a failure. The enemy should never have done what he did because first of all, this, this life you've been living has made you strong. And it's become an equipment for you, for the future that you are entering into. You're more dangerous now 
When you went through all of that stuff, you're more dangerous now. Because you didn't fall down. You, if you fell down, you were racing up again. And you learn to get up. You learn to get up again and again. So you become unconquerable, undestructible to the enemy. And he is not going to have the last word in your life. You're going to see the goodness of God coming to your life, my friend. You're going to see the healing is flowing into your life, into your body, into your mental health, into your family. You're going to see blessings, uh, financial ble blessings. You're going to see deliverance. You're going to see salvation of your family. All the prayers you had for many years and you didn't see anything. You're entering into a supernatural time. 2021 is going to be a shift where we are going to get back what the enemy has stolen from us. Are you ready for receiving God's goodness in your life? He's going to give you what you've been crying for, what you've been fasting for, what you've been wishing and dreaming and thinking. He's going to give you that. God is a God of goodness. He's a God of grace. He's a God of mercy. He gives his children good gifts. He doesn't give you a stone when you ask for a bread or a scorpion when you ask for eggs. He gives his children good gifts. And there is a payback. So he's going to give you double for your trouble. He's going to give you double for your trouble. And maybe there are going to be other form of challenges in the future. Maybe other types. But you see, God wants us to be more bold in this time. He wants us to realize who we are and what we carry on the inside. That is power. And we need to use that, that power now. Not just sit in our churches and say that we have the power of God. God wants you to experience how powerful you, powerful you are in Him. That He's going to push the church in, out into the world. I believe it. He's going to push us out into the, the streets where we have, to, we have to mingle with the world. Many Christians are so scared. Or mingling with the world. We have no choice now. Because we have no church buildings right now. And maybe it's going to be different. Maybe it's not going to go back to the same thing that the church always had. You know, maybe it's going to be a different type of having church service. Because God wants to reach the world. He wants the world to be saved. So he's pushing his body out into the world. But he's going to protect us. And we're going to live like the book of Acts in the future. Where it's going to be tight, but it's also going to be glorious. It's going to be miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. I, I'm rejoicing because I'm looking forward to that light. To that time. To that, to that power. To those miracles, to share with you guys miracle stories. So this is my, my word for you today, my precious friends. You are going to get double for your trouble in the name of Jesus. God bless you, my sister and my brother. Amen.